Welcome to the 81st video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Which side should you face while sleeping? If you have been born in India, you may have heard that it is wrong to sleep with your head in the north. Never lie down to sleep with your head northward is a common order given by the Indian mother to her children. The reasons in olden times were that demons would attack you, you will not be able to sleep properly, etc. They also quote that it is said in the ancient texts. In fact, in Vishnu Purana, it says, O king, it is beneficial to lie down with the head placed eastward or southward. The man who sleeps with his head placed in contrary positions becomes deceased. It is even mentioned in the Mahabharata that men become wise by sleeping eastward and southward. For Indians, east has a special place. All good things are considered good when done facing the east. Placements of kitchen, the entry gate to the house, seating of the bride and bridegroom during marriages and facing the east while doing pujas are all common practices. Even corpses are placed with their head southward and never in any other direction. In olden times, no one questioned it and followed it without thinking too much. When people of our generation started questioning the same, the reasons were found wanting. So what has happened now? It has come dressed up in a scientific attire with some scientific explanation to justify the age-old superstition. This is a perfect example of how superstitions are smuggled in the guise of science. If you search for it on YouTube, you would see many videos which give what appears to be scientific explanations. And it is not just the common folk who do this. Even socially accepted sad gurus try and sneak these in using scientific costumes. If your head is spinning already hearing these signs and you can't make head or toe of the matter and you feel that all your energy is drained and your iron rich blood is boiling, then listen to the video till the end. Earth has a magnetic pole. Opposite poles attract and like poles ripple. Your head is your north pole. So if you face north while sleeping, the north pole and north pole would lead to each magnetic energy repelling each other, which is bad for your brain. Blood has hemoglobin. Hemoglobin contains iron. Magnets attract iron. Your head is your north pole. When the earth's north pole and your north pole are aligned in the same direction, they ripple each other and forces blood out of the brain to the legs and you wake up with a headache all the time you sleep with your head facing north. So it is not good to sleep facing north. North pole attracts everything towards it. Even India is being slowly pulled towards the North Pole at a rate of 4 inches per year. So when you sleep in the horizontal position with your head facing North, your brain pulls all your blood into itself, causing you hemorrhages. What do doctors give you when you are anemic? Iron. That means there is iron in your blood. That iron is attracted by the magnetic North. So you should not sleep facing North. Do these sound as scientific explanations upon first hearing? I am sure it did. We have studied in school that the earth has a magnetic field. We have also studied that hemoglobin in our blood has iron. We also know that magnets attract iron. So why shouldn't these sound right? Well, let me explain. The people who make such claims are similar to six-year-olds in a toy shop. Just imagine you let loose a hyperactive six-year-old in a well-organized toy shop on his own and return back after an hour or so. What would you expect to see on return? You would see the toys literally all over the place. Now, as a shop owner, the time that it would take to fix everything and get the shop back in order 
would definitely take more time and effort than what it took for the child to create disorder. It is the same with these pseudo-scientific people who try to smuggle in science into their history, culture and religious texts. They will be knocking over 300 scientific things using three of their statements on their ways to explain their pseudoscience. And to fix it, that is to get things back in order, it would take a lot more time and effort. So please bear with me as I attempt to do that. Let us start by understanding two things first. What are directions? For one, directions are arbitrary. These are names that we humans have given to specific areas that we want to reference. The sun rises from a particular direction and someone decided to call it east. It seems to set in the opposite direction and someone called it west. Now if we take earth as a sphere and you considered an imaginary axis going through the center, the top part we call as north and the bottom part south. All these are simply names that we humans have given for our understanding. For the earth, it doesn't mean a thing. Tomorrow, you can decide to call east as south or binga and nothing else on earth would change. The sun will continue to rise in the same direction no matter what we call it. However, humans attribute some importance to the directions because we are so used to it. In reality, directions doesn't mean anything except to us homo sapiens. Some people say animals and birds know directions too. Well, no. They can find their way back home or travel to summer land from colder climates. But they don't actually do that after knowing about the nomenclature that we use to denote directions. Also, more than 85% of all people on Earth live in the Northern Hemisphere. So it is not too difficult to guess why the direction North gained prominence. Had it been the other way around, South would have gained the same popularity. Now let us understand the Earth's magnetic force first before we go on to debunk the claims. Earth's magnetic field, also known as the geomagnetic field, is the magnetic field that extends from the Earth's interior out into space where it interacts with the solar wind, a stream of charged particles starting from the sun. The magnetic field is generated by electric currents due to the motion of convection currents of a mixture of molten iron and nickel in the Earth's outer core which is a swirling mass which are ferromagnetic, meaning they can generate magnetism. So there is no denying that the Earth has a magnetic field. But the story is not complete. Let us see the actual science now. Yes, the Earth has a magnetic field and a magnetic pole. I don't deny that. However, magnetism has a property called magnetic intensity which is actually the strength of the magnetic force acting between two bodies. The magnetic intensity of the Earth's magnetic field is very very weak. Else, you would have seen that all iron particles and objects would have been stuck to the surface of the Earth due to its magnetic field. Your mobile phone and your speakers produce more magnetic field than the Earth. Now before you jump on the poor mobile phone, take a look at the back of your refrigerator. There is a very strong magnet placed there which has far more intensity than what the Earth can dish out. If these things don't affect us and our blood, poor weak Earth doesn't definitely stand a chance. It can at most deflect some solar winds which our sun sends across to us or a small needle of a compass. Yes, it can cause the needle of a compass to deflect and align itself in a north-south direction. Now bring a mobile phone next to it. The needle will again deflect. That is because the magnetic field of the mobile phone is far more powerful. If you are still not convinced, think about an MRI machine. They won't let you wear anything metallic before they put you inside the machine. That is because the MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging and the image is taken by applying a really high magnetic field around the area they wish to scan. Just to compare the magnetic intensity of the Earth and an MRI machine, the strength of the magnetic field of Earth is this. And the intensity inside an MRI machine is anything between this. Just compare those two numbers. 
The strength inside an MRI machine is more than 10,000 times that of Earth and yet a patient goes inside and comes out without exploding due to the magnetic force interaction. So the claim that the Earth has a strong enough magnetic field to affect our body is completely false. Okay, so we have now established that the Earth has a very weak magnetic field. But the game doesn't stop there. What about the magnetic field of the body? Most people think of iron as a magnetic material. Iron is ferromagnetic, which means it is attracted to magnets, but only under specific conditions. There are many oxides of iron which are not magnetic. The properties of various chemicals change depending on the condition and their chemical bonds. For example, if you put sodium in water, it will start to fizz and may even explode. Chlorine is a gas that was used to kill enemies during the world war. But when both of these elements combine, they form sodium chloride, something that you can easily pour into water and make some lemonade. So the properties of elements depends a lot on the conditions in which they exist. The iron in our blood is not ferromagnetic, that is, it cannot attract or get influenced by magnetic fields. The next possibility is electric fields inside the body. The electrical currents exist in the human body due to the chemical reactions that occur as part of the normal bodily functions, even in the absence of external electric fields. For example, nerves relay signals by transmitting electrical impulses. Even the heart is electrically active, an activity that your doctor can trace with the help of an electrocardiogram or ECG. But these are very low to have any impact outside the individual cells. Even if, for argument's sake, we assume that there is electricity in the body, one property of electromagnetism is that magnetism happens when the electricity flows in a steady direction. Our body doesn't generate a steady flow of electricity from head to toe or any other ways. Whatever current we generate is very random, highly negligible, doesn't have a specific direction and it is highly specific to the area or function of its activity. It is not capable to produce magnetism inside us. So to say that your head is the magnetic north and your feet are your south pole is just a byproduct of a supercharged imagination and nothing else. Now for humans to produce magnetism to attract something, you need to wear certain types of deodorants or use certain toothpaste and again it works only on the opposite sex, not on Earth. Got that? This fact is slightly confusing as there are several similar sounding words used very often, so please pay attention. Another thing that the pseudoscientific proponents conveniently forget or don't understand is that Earth has a geographic north and a magnetic north. Similarly, it has a geographic south and a magnetic south. Geographic north, also called the true north, is the direction towards the fixed point we call the north pole. The same goes for the geographic south, it is the south pole. But what about magnetic north? The magnetic north pole actually represents the south pole of the earth's magnetic field and conversely, the south magnetic pole corresponds to the north pole of the Earth's magnetic field. Confusing? Please pause, rewind and hear it again. The north magnetic pole is actually the south pole of the Earth's magnetic field. Why? Because opposite magnetic poles attract and the north end of a magnet, like a compass needle, points towards the Earth's south magnetic field. That is, the north magnetic pole. So, if you have understood this, the fact is that what you consider as north is actually the south magnetic pole of the earth. So in that case, if you go by the pseudoscientific explanation, you should sleep with your head facing the north direction as it is not north magnetic pole which is there, but the south magnetic pole. I know this one is a bit confusing, but never mind. Don't worry if you didn't understand it. Just stick to the other points if this one goes above your head. There is a curious fact about the magnetic pole of the earth. 
Because it is created due to the swirling metals inside the core, it keeps shifting its location. The magnetic north of the Earth has been shifting its position over thousands of years. This picture will show how it has moved. As of 2015, the North Geomagnetic Pole was located on Ellesmere Island in Canada. So if you are considering the magnetic north, it is not where the geographical north is. So if the pseudoscientific claims were to be believed, you should not be sleeping with your head facing Ellesmere Island in Canada, wherever that is. As you can see in the animation video, which shows the wandering of the Earth's North Magnetic Pole over the past 50 years. The geomagnetic North Pole has been shifting its place over centuries now. But is that accounted for in the ancient texts? Well, no. Nobody in those days had the knowledge to understand about true North and the magnetic North. So obviously, they stuck to true North. There is another factor which is related to this, but since the event happens over a long period of time, it is not very significant but it is still relevant. There is something called pole reversal which happens on Earth. At irregular intervals averaging several hundred thousand years, the Earth's magnetic field reverses and the North and South magnetic poles respectively abruptly switch places. These reversals of the geomagnetic poles leave a record in rocks that are of value to scientists studying this in calculating geomagnetic fields in the past. Pole reversals are common in Earth's geological history. Paleomagnetic records tells us that the Earth's magnetic poles have reversed 183 times in the last 83 million years. The time intervals between reversals have fluctuated widely but average about 300,000 years, with the last one taking place about 780,000 years ago. Well, as you can see, the time duration of the videos of the people who have the wrong notion have spread their pseudoscience in under 10 minutes. But my debunking video has taken almost double of that. And this is what I meant at the start with the child in the Toy Story example. It is easy to spew pseudoscience and you will get a lot of gullible people who are ready to believe anything to support you. But to explain the scientific truth behind it requires a lot more effort, is time consuming as it requires one to explain so much science and at the end of it all, won't get too many takers. But will that stop me from debugging the claims? Of course not. Well, I made this video facing north, so if it doesn't get my regular share of views, I know whom to blame. So which direction should you sleep tonight? Whichever direction you feel like. And can I guarantee that you won't get a headache tomorrow morning if you slept facing north? Well, that depends on what liquid you consume in what amounts before you sleep tonight. Just don't blame it on poor earth and its magnetic field. It barely can drive away solar winds. It won't work as effectively on ethyl or methyl alcohol which are much more heavier elements. I hope you enjoyed this debunking episode. Please don't forget to like and comment to let me know your thoughts. Until we meet again, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.